I first heard about Maya Baba at about the same time that quite a few other Australians did in 1967 and I think I was living in Sydney at the time. Yeah, so that was um, early 1967 I think, yeah. I was probably 20 years old and uh, I'd, heard, I'd heard a lot about Hinduism and other things and um, when I first heard of Baba it sounded very important, un uncannily important. I've heard other people say this too, just hearing Baba's name and the fact that Baba had this status of God-man I found very exciting and compelling, yes. And so I started getting a few books. I think I was told about um, Baba by people who weren't really interested in Baba. They just knew some Baba people and told me about it. So I started, I bought some books from the Theosophical Society and, and uh, sort of went on from there. I was very taken by what, what Baba was saying and compared to other masters that I'd come across and uh, filling in vast gaps of, um, of the complexity of, of Hinduism, trying to sort of get my head around that as a 20 year old was a bit too much, but Baba's story of, of, of love and, and devotion and his status seemed to cut through all of that to me. So, yeah, living in Sydney, Melbourne, and really only accessing any of this through the Theosophical Society. And then um, moving to Queensland, uh, which I'd always been taken with as a child, this area around the Sunshine Coast I'd, I'd been to briefly and really liked it. And um, when myself and my first wife decided to go bush, we came to um, to Wombai and, and bought a little farm at the base of Keel Mountain and then started telling people about Baba and they said, well, um, he, he's actually been here. So uh, came up to Avatar's abode and met the Brufords and I thought that was you know, cosmic. Everything's cosmic when you're 20. I think it was 21 by this stage. Everything's cosmic. and. Uh, I thought, well, Australia's a pretty big place, and Barbara's brought me right to the to the to the spot, and uh, not just visiting, buying a property here, and uh, so that was really my introduction to Barbara in the the human sense of meeting people who'd met Barbara and experiencing going to his room and just the whole power of Avatar's abode. So that was. Uh, in 1968, and um, yeah, then I stayed on for 50 years. My first impressions really were of the Bruford family, and uh, I remember thinking these are the sort of seriously eccentric people that I grew up around. I, I, I really bonded with them straight away. Their um, take on Barber, I suppose, the way they describe Barber was something that I, I certainly hadn't got from the books. Uh, books like Everything and the Nothing and Discourses and things were, were, were really not going to relate that to me. And um, the, just the immediacy of Barber having been here was, um, was, was exciting, but it didn't, um, yeah, it just broadened it out. It was pretty wild, I guess you'd say. Yeah, it was, it was overgrown. The only really um, cared for places were around the, the two houses and immediately around Barbara's house there was um, lawns around here and a, a goat that used to eat the, eat the grass. And um, so it was very, very different, yes. Very different. The road in, I mean, just driving in, there was no houses along my road, and uh, the the road in was was pretty rough. And uh, you would come through to Barber's house area, but um, and everyone would park on the lawn just outside Barber's house, and that did go on for quite some years, actually. 
Well, the first time I came, I didn't go to Barber's Room. In fact, I wasn't told about Barber's Room, which I thought was interesting. There was a, a more, even though I was, you know, certainly a barber lover, and that's why I came, but I, I wasn't told about Barber's Room. And that was a little bit the case in those days. People were, uh, that was something you came to later, and something that Francis had said too, that he, he wouldn't necessarily um, want to take people to Barber's Room on their first visit. So that was that sort of protocol was 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 followed. So the next time I came, well, of course I you know did get to come to Barbara's room, which I found as I do to this day very powerful. Well, the main impact I suppose was the respect that he was held in. That um, I mean, from my point of view, I'd I'd um, I'd, I'd read Barbara's message and studied his teachings to some extent. That was, that was very powerful. Then I'd met, I started meeting Baba people who could explain the humanity of the situation to me. And um, that extended to them talking about, uh, talking about Francis, but it was very much um, a, a distant person who, who I got the, came to the realisation that he had um, started this place and that he just seemed to be very much present on a number of levels even though he wasn't here. Barbara was still in the body at that time and um, Robert was the, the manager and um, things were ma managed very much via Francis' um, directions from, from Barbara or uh, I don't know, maybe in those days Barbara was a bit more involved in things, but he was starting to spend much, much more time in seclusion. So I suppose the limited amount of things that need to be directed here would have been directed by Francis, yes. So um, he, was, he was present, but not present. Just helping out, it was mainly just, I suppose you'd say, fighting back all of the, the nature, you know, that was... Um, so that was more so, I mean, I got very involved when Francis came back, but prior to that, I, I would come and help, help out occasionally. It was normally things like chopping down groundsel bushes and things like that. Yeah, yeah Robert and Bernard to some, to some extent, although Bernard wasn't living here at the time, but um, mainly, mainly Robert, how it was working with Robert. Uh, that's, that was interesting. I mean, he was... Um, he would talk about this, that he was a, a city boy who'd been um, sort of thrust into this situation. But Robert had come here as a relatively young man and worked on pineapple farms and all sorts of things around the area because, and as, as Bernard did uh, uh, in previous years, so um, he, he knew a lot about um, the aspects of farming that he picked up from local people. And uh, I just enjoyed his presence and stories about Barbara. And also, um, he was the one who probably gave me the more accurate picture of, of, of Francis. But it, when I met Francis, none of it seemed to really fit. He was not that easy to describe. And other people like May Lundquist would talk about Francis. And um, um, I don't recall... Um, Getting anything remotely that um, that fitted my picture of Frances from 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 May, she was very very respectful to, of Frances, and um, mainly kept warning me that he could be could be a little cranky and you know, don't just ask him silly things and all of this, which I found to be not terribly useful <laughs> advice. Well, Avatar's boat was very beautiful, of course, but it was it was. An, an old overgrown farm, basically. So yes, you had the bush, but you, you also, um, there was uh, bits of pineapple patches and things around that had been, were growing over and old banana plantations and things. I mean, the place had been essentially abandoned um, from a farming point of view many, many years ago. And then uh, Robert was doing some farming here and that was all quite well cared for. 
but um, and but there was a lot more nature around. Yeah, there was a lot more animals around, koalas and things like that, which we don't see now, and probably a few more wallabies, a lot more snakes. I must say, there was quite yeah, it was quite a lot of snakes in those days, which we don't see much now. So, um, but also the whole area was quite overgrown. You couldn't drive from Avatar's Bow down to Marichidor. You couldn't get through the Kiel Mountain Road was overgrown. The, the, the whole area was um, very, very quiet. Yeah, very quiet. I don't, don't recall any, I mean, it was much the same. It was much the same, yeah. I, I, I don't recall anything particular. It was just um, the Australian bush in a rural setting that was, was being overtaken by the bush again. Well, there were regular meetings, yeah. There was an oh, anniversary, Barbara's birthday, <coughs> Um, and other gatherings, which were very small, um, they were a little bigger around Christmas time when people would visit, but essentially there, were, there was only the Brufords and Rouses here. So it was, yeah, it was very, very quiet for the first couple of years. Well, they weren't here at that point, but they came after a couple of years. Other, other people came, yes. I, I mean, I can name them, but there was, I think, um, Maynard and Sally were the, probably the first ones to move here. Maybe John Isaacs moved here before that. And then Roy and Ross Hayes moved here in, um, to, uh, but all of this, I think, was after Barbara dropped the body. Yeah, yeah I believe so. I, I, that was actually quite a significant thing when, when Barbara dropped the body here and people were preparing to go to the, um, the 69 Darshan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was a very, very big thing. Big thing for uh, all of us and for such a small community. That was, that was huge, yes. I, I, um, just the impact on people. And a surprise. Well, shock, really. I mean, Barbara had been in seclusion and people knew his, his health was um, touchy, I, sp I suppose you'd say, and um, things were deteriorating. But I guess as God-man, you don't, you know, you don't expect him to die, I suppose. So, um, and, and a lot of people had various things to say about the significance of, of, of that and where the group should go from here and some of it I remember, some of it I wouldn't recount anyway. But um, yeah, no, no, it was a very big thing. So my first um, meeting with Francis was really not a meeting at all. I, uh, there was a function here after Francis got back from India and he, and there was, Surprisingly, quite a few people there. I don't remember. Quite a few in those days was probably 20 or 30, I suppose. But I actually came to the to the function just before it started, and came uh, Francis when he, he he came back to Sydney uh, for a month or so, and then he came up to um, came up to Queensland to stay. So. Um, Yes, it would have been, I know, I think it was maybe even like October or something in 69, in September, October. So really the first time I saw Francis was when he got on his feet in Barb's house and, go, and delivered um, the talk that um, many people would have, would have heard about him returning, returning to Australia. And I mean, the whole thing was, was very, very powerful. Um, I was probably, well, I had a first few first reactions. I mean, one is, gee, he's quite short <laughs> and, um, and that he's um, very strong, and, you know, very, a str very strong presence. I was also a bit surprised that he gave such a formal talk to such a small group of people that he, he read it and he'd, he'd written it as a, as a talk. And um, I also somehow had a different physical image of Francis. I, I, I don't know why. Apparently, I hadn't seen a photo of him because I didn't didn't know what he looked. I didn't know what he looked like. I don't know why I hadn't seen a photo. But I obviously, hadn't or hadn't taken any notice. So, because um, Francis could be, and and yeah, he was 
wasn't a, 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 a relaxed speaker. He, he was quite formal and uh, so that was, yeah, my, that was my first time I met Francis and my first impressions were of someone very strong. I was a little surprised at how formally he, he took the occasion. The sort of uh, poetry you don't necessarily expect from someone in, the, in those sort of settings, you know. I mean, he, that was, yes, that was literally how, how he opened it up. It was formal. Mm -hmm. It was formal. But it, for Francis coming back to Australia was a very big thing for him. Mm -hmm. you know, that was a big phase in his, in his life, which maybe we can get onto later, but it, it was clearly a big, a big phase in his life. Well, just, we can just stick to the first impressions. I mean, I then met Francis in much more casual situation, came and visited him and um, it was, and also that evening, he was much, you know, much more informal and we all had cups of tea and things. So, um, but it was, that was part of Francis, that, that seriousness yeah. and, um, and was, part, was part of Francis. So I was, I, it seemed perfectly appropriate that that was how I first first saw him and um, I was very very immediately t um, taken by the the weight of this this fellow yes and uh, I, could, I, I remember thinking these people weren't exaggerating you know, this guy's serious you know. so um, so really it was like I, I first encountered Baba through books and through his teachings and then through people that I met that it could explain his humanity. And then really Francis told me who he was and where he fitted into everything. And, and the other people, as fond as I were of them and as much as I appreciated their company, didn't, uh, couldn't deliver that sort of thing. Well, I mean, it's all in stay with God, and all, uh, it's all in stay with God. But I mean, just the um, the significance of where of where Barbara is placed in the thing. I mean, Francis was could tell you about his humanity, and he could tell you about his teachings, but also how you know, Barbara, as the, as the new avatar, fitted into the the broad picture of the past and, and, and also into the future, which, which Francis was very interested in. And this was something, um, a degree of daring that other people you know, hadn't, hadn't come to and I don't think have done in the barber world from my point of view. I mean, Francis was um, really stood out in, in India as, as, as the one who could articulate that and, and not just um, regurgitating, sounds a bit rude, but bringing up things that Baba had said about his place, but actually saying it himself. You know? I mean, he, he, he to the extent that a, a mortal can, he knew who Baba was and, and he knew how to um, articulate that, which was, was very powerful for all of us, all of us here and also for the other Mundali too. No, not so much how Baba's ministry would evolve as of, of, of how we could celebrate it and, and um, add to it from our human perspective. Yeah, I mean mostly through the arts and, and, and other things. Well, Francis had a, a, had, it really goes back to him, um, him coming back to Australia. I mean, he'd spent Ten years with Barbara in India. Prior to that, he'd been writing things like Journey with God and all these various poetry things. He'd been read, he wrote uh, Stay with God before he went to India. Um, now, various ones of us have. have uh, there was a discussion here pretty recently with Ward Parks and others. And could Francis have written that after he spent ten years with Barbara? And and people who know Francis said pretty clearly no. You know, he was just. Uh, for, uh, his time with with Baba, by his own words, were, were not spent analysing who he was. You know that wasn't how it was. He 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 was there um, at, with with Baba as as God Man, and um, they they weren't analysing um, they weren't analysing who Baba was. And and Francis would say how 
totally overwhelmed he was by the, by the whole situation. So it was really um, more of a sort of devotional situation day by day, not a period of analysis for Francis. That's something he went through earlier. Well, one, of, one line of, of his, which I, I, I can't quote exactly, was um, if you were um, a little less God and a bit more man, I wouldn't feel like I was upside down in a garbage can. And he was, that was, I guess, said to Barber through his work. And, um, but it was also a, a cultural thing with, with Francis. I mean, he, he was there with a whole mixture of people. Um, he was there with Parsis and Iranis and Hindus and, and Muslims, all just with, and Westerners all within the Mundali. And um, he, he was, uh, he came there with a lot of, a, lo a lot of ideas, both cultural and spiritual, and a lot of basis. I mean, he was a, a Sufi sheikh and a, and 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 a, and a student of a lot of things that those, that those people, uh, the other Mundali, certainly wouldn't have known about at all. I mean, they would have had the, the, his depth of understanding of Buddhism and Vedanta and, and Sufism was something they would have had no reason to, to uh, have experienced. So, but he was, he was in amongst an interesting group of people. And he, uh, from his um, recollections, um, was very, very respectful of those people. But... Culturally, I think he took a bit of a dominant role there, but it was also what he'd wa what he'd walked into. I mean, Francis had been um, th looking at previous advents and looking at at at, um, at India and what the God Man was and all that sort of thing. And then he he comes to India and finds out the God Man's the 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 son of a Persian immigrant who who had no you know whose family had no status. Uh, really, in the broad, broader spiritual life of India, um, and it it was really quite a different situation. I mean, he was aware of all the the tensions around the the Parsi community and all sorts of things of who Baba was, and Baba was very accepted amongst the circle of the five perfect masters and their ad advents and people around Maharashtra, but but beyond that. It was quite a controversial situation. And uh, so there was a lot going on. Although one thing to remember is that Francis and all Australians came to Barber very late. I mean, we're talking 1950s here and Barber's you know, work was, uh, big works were way before that. I mean, Barber's power as avatar was still there, but his major works, his major travellings and things like that, um, well, his travellings were over. So um, it, it, was, it was a later time and that time at, uh, at, at Marazad was very different to the earlier times at Marabad and Munsley Meme and all of these sort of things which Francis wasn't at all involved in. He, he came at a much more settled, a settled time where Baba was a lot more in seclusion and he had a lot more access day to day, I guess, to Baba than he would have in those earlier times. I mean times, you know, like the new life and all of that sort of stuff. I mean, it was all very different phase. Absolutely, yes. Just by the way he, how, how he related with us, it was very much from a Sufi point of view. I mean, to, to be around Francis, it was, um, he was unashamedly approaching it from a, a, a teacher-pupil murid situation. And um, when I say unashamedly, I, I actually mean, mean that. He didn't, he would accept the fact that these, these are young people and you know, I've had a lot more experience and I, I, I'm happy to, um, to, in a way, dominate the situation. And most of us were very, very happy with that. Although that varied a lot. Some people, um, I was, brought up around people like that and you know my, my first reaction with Francis was here's someone who knows something you know this guy knows important things 
And I didn't have any reaction against Francis's authoritarian manner at all. I don't recall ever having, having that. But other people did. They had trouble adjusting to that. I mean, just through their, their family situation and their, I mean, we're, we're talking 60s, you know, hippie sort of time and, you know, the, the old, old generation get out of the way. So it, some people did have a little trouble um, adapting to Francis's style, but with virtually no exceptions, they all did. I mean, Francis just was so strong, people would defer to him yeah. out, of, out of love and respect, not out of any games that he would play. He did, and, and it was, I mean, he knew he knew things, he, he, he knew stuff. And I mean, getting on to what he wanted to do with art, I, I guess it was in a way, he, he, he wasn't expecting much from Australia and probably wasn't expecting much from us and didn't get much from us, really. I mean, the, the, and, and this was 1969, there was, you know, I think there was a lot of, we really felt, we really felt the 60s was a big, you know, big cultural shift. And Francis, um, and we probably had the idea that Francis had been locked away in, in Marazad and hadn't really lived the 60s like we had. Which wasn't entirely true because there was a lot of contact. There was people going to India from from um, from America, and there was a lot of people sending things to all the different monthly about what was going on. And I think Francis was pretty pretty aware of it, and in some ways, I think he saw it as a continuation of the 50s. Really, I mean, all the sort of beat generation stuff and the 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 empowerment of youth and and um, other more sort of sophisticated concepts becoming broad in the, in the universities and communities. I mean, this was something not unknown to him at all. Um, we'd been more the ones who had been out of the picture. We, we got it all through popular culture, which wasn't a, very, a great filter to get it through. He got it through people um, wanting to interact with the avatar and also Barbara's reaction to it all. So. I think he had a much better view of it than what we probably thought. Robert Rouse was a person who kept up with things that were going on. So he did have a, 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 view, a view of it all and overall didn't seem to think it was any great import what was happening in the, to young people in America and Europe and Australia. It didn't seem to hold a lot of weight for him. Um, but, you know, despite his um, pupil teacher situation, he was very thoughtful t to us because he realised what we did, it, it, it was a big thing for us, you know, we hadn't spent the last 10 years in the centre of the, of the world, we, we'd spent it down, uh, down here and uh, I think he was quite respectful to the fact that we found it really important. And, um, but wasn't, you know, wasn't overly exci excited by it. And when you, when, I mean, when you got into the things that Francis was culturally interested in, they had so much more, more depth than, than what, what we were getting out of the 60s counterculture. Um, I mean, because 60s counterculture was important within the framework of what it was, but in the broader sweep of things, you weren't getting some of the, the, the cultural giants and the, the, the Francis was telling us about. Well, it was more a matter of, of how culture and how culture and art I intertwined, which is really a, essentially what a big part of Stay with God is about. So it's a whole treatise that he had had really established in in his own mind, and also in in what Francis had said in the be in the beginning of Stay with God, how his life had been about a search for beauty and its relation to truth, and. That really came out through through Francis's work very much, and through his his inspirations. I mean, he was set about re-educating um, those of us who he could see some spark of interest in, in um, mostly in Western arts. I must say, for someone who'd had spent so long studying um, other art forms, um, um, particularly. Um, Hinduism and all that sort of stuff. He was really pushing to us the the um, 
things like the great composers, like someone like Bach, you know, who he was very taken with Bach. Now Bach to me was an aim. I grew up around classical music as a in my house and as in my work, but I had no no sense that Bach knew who who Jesus was as avatar, you know, and those sort of concepts were just totally new to to me. All the concept of Jesus being avatar was totally new to me before Francis. Um, so that, th those sort of things about the, the, the depth of things that we just had been in our culture that hadn't been presented in, in, a, in a way which tied into Barber's cosmology. And Francis was capable of, of, of doing that very, very easily because um, not only had he come to those realisations himself, he'd explored all that with Barber too. I mean, you know, Barbara had, had, had said to Francis, I gather, you know, how do you know all these things? You know, how, how do you know these things? And uh, Francis had an absolutely en encyclopedic <laughs> knowledge of these things, but he also understood where they fitted in. And that was the, the big thing that he was conveying to us, yeah. Well, I suppose the difference between... Um, between sort of true inspiration and emotional, an emotional impact, you know. I mean, Francis was. Um, oh, well, a better answer would be I don't know. But um, what I got from Francis was was that there, there, there's a lot more depth to these things that go back to the eternal truths. I mean, you, you go into things in Art Khan and. People like Kumaraswamy and that who were talking about the potency of, of, of sound and tying that in with, a, with realizations a, around divinity and things. I mean, it's, it's a really a very, very deep thing, which uh, I, I can't explain because I don't, I don't really know. But I, I did have the sense that Francis did have some major insights into, the, into these things and wasn't afraid to, to, to tell you so. But it was more. It was more the Western, um, the Western artists um, that he was interested in. In with us, I mean, Francis's um, understanding of, of of Indian history really seemed to go back to earlier times. Francis would, would, would was to some extent, unless I'm misunderstanding it, a little bit dismissive of modern India. When I say modern India in the 1950s. Um, he, he wasn't um, feeling that the, 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 the power of it was still there. I mean, you go back to times like, Ash you know, Ashoka was the, was the sort of emperor of the whole of India and he was, he was a, a Buddhist and a, and a Jain and an ascetic and all this sort of stuff. And then you go on much later with Akbar and these sort of people. I mean, these are things that, that, that really haven't happened in the West and haven't happened in our world where the the whole leadership and inspiration for a country is, is done by, by, by someone who, who knows things. I mean, this, this, this hasn't happened. And Francis, to my rec recollection, saw that as being very much in the past. He talked about the golden age of India and that sort of thing and uh, didn't seem so excited about India right now, but... Um, in terms of with us, he was, yeah, I, I would say now other people might f feel differently, but was more interested in, in, the, in the power that we had in our own culture. Mm. And that was something that I think to some extent he got from being around Marabad, where Baba would expect even the Mundali to pay attention to their, to their um, rel religious and, and, and cultural past. And, uh, you know, if you could be... Um, a good a Muslim, that was pretty good, yeah. you know, yeah. and it didn't take away from Barbara. And I, I know with myself, I, I, I'd said to him once, um, he was telling me a, a, a story about Christianity and um, it was more that I was complaining about the government to him. And when I, it was actually not long after I got back and I was 20 year old and full of, you know, inspirational non nonsense and, um, and he said, well, what, what, what are you saying all this for? He said, don't, don't, you, know, you know what Jesus said about, about the government at the time? And I said, no. And he said, well, uh, Jesus asked someone to show him a coin. And he showed him a coin and said, whose head's on that coin? He said, well, Caesar's. 
and that was, well, give unto Caesar what's Caesar's, you know, that's his money, but give unto God what's God, it's your soul, you know. And, I mean, that was a, a, a very deep way of, instead of saying to me, what are you bothering with politics for? He would, he would take that into something very real, which, which really supported a whole area of Christianity, which is a very, you know, it's a very refined part of Christianity. That there's levels of things that you should be concerned about, but your relationship with God is the is the main one. And Francis, through just little anecdotes like that, could do could do that sort of thing in a totally unpretentious manner. Oh, well, the early ones was probably when I was being chastised, which I was for not knowing about Christianity. You know, I mean, and, and, and Francis said to me then, he said, um, when I said, I don't know anything about Christianity, my parents were the theosophists and Quakers, and I, I didn't know, know anything about it. And he said, uh, said to me then that Barbara is your intimate, Jesus is your culture. And... That was that. That was a really. It was a big, big theme of his that we don't go off chasing other inspirations and ignoring where we are placed. You know, we're placed in a in a in a Christian society which has depth. Now, um, but it only has depth if if you know where to look and you're touched by it. And 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 this was the, the the cultural things that he was bringing bringing out to us very much, as I said, as opposed to themes from uh, from other cultures. So that that was one thing I remember. Other things I remember well, on the theme of being chastised. I, I remember um, that the Hare Krishnas were quite was starting to get big in New York, or not big, starting to get visible in New York in the, in the late sixties. And I remember saying to him, "How embarrassing! People going onto the streets there and 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 chanting the the Vedas in in the streets of New York." And 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 um, I, I said, I, "I I thought it was really embarrassing," which is sort of an odd thing to say. Anyway, he said, "Look." And we was t I was talking about the early Hare Krishnas and he said, those people would know as much about Krishna as we know about Baba. Nothing. But he said, what they're on about is really, really important. And then he told me about Chaitanya and how Chaitanya as a minor advent of Avatar would go into an ecstatic state and dance in the street. And this is what these people were doing. You know? So Francis could build those sort of things out into, and bring some real truth to them. So that was the, the sort of things I, 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 I remember when I was being told off. <laughs> oh, well, I remember one about... Um, can, there used to be a lot of people wandering through Avatar's abode. This was sort of mid-70s. And, and, um, and they were, um, you know, tended to have no visible means of support and all of that sort of thing. And Francis would, I'd say, oh yes, they always want to, they always want to share things, but they haven't got anything to share, you know. And he was you know, sort of joked about it. And then one day I was, I was critical of, of some people, and uh, and he said um, they might be deeply annoying, but they are the new humanity. So um, he, there was this respect, but once again, the bigger picture. Oh, well, inspirational stories. Gosh, I mean, just uh, Fra Francis had the, had the means to bring that sort of stuff out. I mean, uh, well, one particular one that I, I think I would have recounted to you before when we were working, we used to work, I used to work a lot with Francis and for the first couple of years, mostly myself and sometimes John Isaacs and then others, but I remember once we were building a fence um, down the back of Avatar's abode and we spent months building this fence which was consisted of wooden posts that we put in the ground and, and drilled them and put wire in it. It, it took a, quite a long time. And when it was finished I, sa I said to him, well, all these wooden posts right up against a beautiful bush. And he said to me, um, I said, I didn't, don't like it, you know, that it, it seems you know, quite jarring. And he said, 
God would like the posts, the fence, more than the bush. And I thought, oh, now where, where's this going? <laughs> and he said, us putting those fence posts in a line is a minor piece of art. He said, art has love, the bush just has instinct. And this was the sort of thing where you're working out, you know, amongst the flies and the, the, the prickles and he comes out with this, you know, which is a really very potent thing with a lot, you know, a thing that can, you can broaden out then. Yeah. But and, and he wouldn't then lecture you about it, that's all he'd say. Oh, well, when I would come, I would come and Francis would, would write in the, in the mornings and... Um, then spent quite a bit of time organising his meals and washing and things like that. And then we'd spend an, an hour or two outside working, yeah, cut, uh, doing, um, oh, working on roads and fences and things like that. And he really, enjo he really enjoyed that and um, enjoyed spending time with us and telling us stories and us um, pretending sometimes that we didn't know quite as much as we thought we, he, we thought we did and letting him take charge of things that he didn't always know about. <laughs> but it was a pleasure to do that, you know, to, to have Francis um, exerting himself on a number of levels towards us was, was always valuable. Uh, yes, I think it was fairly typical of the sort of things that people who grew up on farms knew. I mean, Francis had spent quite a lot of time on the farm. Then, you know, living in India, he'd seen things done, although it was probably all done by servants and that sort of thing. But um, I guess it's like anyone in that area, he knew what his, he was experienced with and, um, and was very essentially um, quite practical. Yeah, he wasn't from an engineering point of view, he wasn't, but from a, um, an immediate sense of how to do work. He was also very interested in, in the whole yoga of physical work, of not exerting yourself beyond what you, what you need to. He, he was interested in, in the art of doing things on a practical level. I remember once he, he was um, um, somewhat, a, one of the residents here had uh, I went to, to ask the, this person uh, uh, how to do something, and uh, which, which Francis and I couldn't work out. And I, anyway, I was told it couldn't be done. And so I came back to Francis and I said, oh, oh I had said it, it can't be done. But what I think he meant is it can't be done by a young, inexperienced person like you. And he said, yeah, that's probably what it meant. And he said, what, what, people don't understand that perfection in doing a task is doing it to the level that's appropriate. And that was a, a, quite a deep thing. He said even for Barbara, it was a perfection was doing it to the level that's appropriate, not bringing your own, uh, own sort of fantasies about um, the quality of what it should be, but examining the situation and and doing it to that level was perfection in a task. And the Francis were very, very interested in that. Yeah, but that's not a new thing. I mean, that goes back through to Zen and, and, and all, all sorts of disciplines. Uh, but he would talk about, the, recount those sort of little stories out of, um, out of Zen teachings and things. And that was all mixed in with the, with the physical work, yeah. yeah. I think Francis's ideas about that were probably a little naive that people would want to come and do that sort of thing. I, I, uh, generally speaking, they didn't. They would like coming and spending time with Francis, but I, I don't think people really had some sort of romantic sense about labouring in the countryside. You know, that was more possibly something that was valid around the Baron's time and his experiences at Camden, things like that. Um, and it was a, more of a sort of romantic notion that didn't quite translate through to the, to the uh, 1970s. Oh, very much so, yeah, absolutely, to spend any time with Francis, yeah. 
and I I did spend a lot of time with him, yeah, by myself. And well, I was no one else much around yeah, in those early couple of years. Yeah. Yes, when he first came back from from India, and that was a very interesting time. Yeah, just um, I sort of felt that he was. Um, sort of over India in some ways. I, my sense wasn't that other people would know a lot more than me about this, that after, dro other, after Baba dropped his body, I guess, there, there was um, questions about whether he would come back to Australia at all or when he would come back to Australia. And I, I, I think he, the, the other Mundali were taking on, beginning to take on another role of hosting young Westerners coming there and um, they became, you know, at, at their own, through their own generosity, the, um, actors in a, a very big play, you know. We are now going to um, relive Baba's time here and convey his potency to, to, to you. And it was a very great gift that they, that they gave people. And, I think on one hand, I, I would say that Francis probably wasn't well suited to that role and apparently didn't intend to stay and become part of that. And that was a very, very big thing for a lot of us. But therein sort of lay the difference really between Francis as a, um, on one level, unsophisticated um, Australian from a, 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 a not privileged background to uh, Parsis and Hindus who really to, to just survive had to, had to be able to operate on so many different levels socially. Uh, very, very different situation. And um, they, they were much more suited to, to, that, to that role. Fra Francis, wa uh, I don't think, was at all attracted to it. And, possibly wouldn't have been um, really what people wanted either. Well, he didn't do it um, as a, as a, a lead-in to um, conveying um, the Baba's authority or anything like that. No, no, he, he didn't. I mean, it would come up mm -hmm. and he would talk about it. Um, quite often he would talk about P uh, the fact that people had no understanding of what was going on at Mayor's Head in those last couple of years when Barbara was essentially in seclusion. I mean, people were asked not to write, not to communicate. They took absolutely no notice and, and did so, and he had to deal with it. He and Erich had to deal with it. I don't know who dealt with the Americans being thoughtless and, you know, being spe wanting to be special and <laughs> communicate with Barbara when he'd said not to. Uh, I don't know who dealt with that, but I know Francis dealt with the uh, the Australian side of things, and he was, um, you know, very um, openly critical of of them for do for doing that. That um, Francis didn't seem to think people. Uh, I mean, he was aware that Australians were really very um, unattuned to dealing with genuine authority with any sort of sense of comfortable reverence you know. and uh, I suppose he you know he, he he'd experienced that himself you know. I guess after 10 years in India he he got the picture of how how to be around a great one I'm not sure that would have come naturally to him before well, the, the, the main thing was really of how he was totally overwhelmed by the whole situation. Yeah. Totally overwhelmed by it. He said it was just, being around Barbara was just so, so enormous that it covered, it, it just overwhelmed them. And um, that, was prob that, that was certainly the main thing. And he made effort to convey that to us too. Yeah, in a sense that um, I remember him saying to me one side, I was asking him some sort of tricky question and we were just walking out of Barbara's house and, and um, he just looked at me and said, you, you, you won't get anything, you won't get anything much possibly out of those of us 
who've, who've met Baba. We were blinded by his form. And other Mandali have said, said this too. The whole experience was, was happening on so many levels that um, it, was, it was very hard to describe in human terms. There were so many things going on. And Francis found it very difficult, and other Mandali did too. I mean, the others tried to leave, you know, and uh, it, it was just such a huge thing. And how Baba would deal with them privately. I mean, Francis did convey a bit, a bit of that. That um, that Baba was was pretty firm and expected a lot from them. And then other visitors would come and who would, you know, fr from Francis's terms, behave appallingly. And and Francis and Baba would just, you know, be 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 charming to them. You know, I don't remember the details. I remember him being, yeah, very. I suppose hurts the word. Yeah, yes. He he didn't find that 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 easy. No. But um, Francis would didn't hesitate to be critical about things that he saw, and and um, a, a lot of what he saw there in India was not to, not to his liking. But in terms of people coming and uh, behaving appallingly, uh, the 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 sort of background of that was that he got from Baba, you don't know who these people are and you don't know my relationship with them. And that wasn't um, always said in those words, but you know, Francis was aware that um, Baba's relationship with those people was, was, was uh, far, far different to his impressions of their behaviour or the Francis impressions of their behaviour. So Francis was so respectful to to, to Baba and understood respect. He understood respect and that um, there's so many things in respect, so many, you know, deference and love and appreciation and things. And he understood them and could articulate them. And, and these are things which we, we have no particular experience of in our life growing up in Australia. And to some extent it was probably new to him when he went there was interested in some, um, some cultural things that people would bring up with him. Once they got the handle of what would interest him, I mean, us bringing up sort of countercultural stuff from Hyde Ashbury or something, didn't we work out that didn't um, excite him very much. But people would bring up other cultural things to him and, um, and he was really, yeah, he was, he, was inter he was interested in that. But in terms of political stuff, I mean, I don't think there was anything much happening here or in India or anywhere else that I recall him, him commenting on. So um, he had so many inputs that he could, um, could sort of latch onto and be, and be inspired by or inspire us with. But in terms of what, um, what he was interested in us doing, he was very conscious that, I mean, something like group singing, for instance, which did really develop at Avatar's abode into, uh, to really quite a high level, I mean, primarily and almost entirely because of Sam Saunders, who was, um, took Francis's work and um, was, was a very good composer and, and really made, made that into a whole new in a sense, a new art form. I mean, Francis had written poems, not songs, and then uh, Sam really added to it with the music, and, and, he, and Francis was very appreciative of that. There was also, we used to put on plays and things here, some of Francis's work, some of other stories, and I don't, to be honest, know how appreciative he was. I mean, he was appreciative of our efforts, but um, I don't think they came to anything. <laughs> that much, but he was a very appreciative that we would, would make the effort. But um, there wasn't a lot of, I don't feel a lot of huge talent around. And, but Francis was very interested in, in a new presentation of Barber. I mean, he wrote a song or something about making it new and he would talk about that, that there needed to be some new, fresh, appreciation and, and um, an outlet for culturally for Baba. 
And my impression is he didn't, he didn't see it happen in his lifetime, but he would often uh, talk in much broader sense and saying all these things will happen, you know, they'll, they'll all happen. So I don't think he was, um, he had to work with what was his. Yeah. And also he had no particular skills as a, as a playwright or a, a musical director or anything like that. I mean, you know, he couldn't take us, take us there himself. So um, if he had been, we would have gone there. I remember how that, in my recollection, first came up that Francis was, um, I think it was not exaggerating to say, mortally embarrassed that when Barber had come here and asked to be entertained, that no one could adequately do that. And he, he did say that um, that's not going to happen again, mm -hmm. that, um, that, that, that Barber should be, be, be entertained. Whether that was where he got that sort of notion of entertaining the beloved who is not in your physical presence, I, I don't know. It's, um, it's something that other people have, have placed a little bit more weight on. I, I just simply remember it as his embarrassment the, uh, of, of the situation. But, uh, it's quite clear that Barbara at had, Marazad had and would would ask to be entertained. They they that um, famous artists were brought to perform in front of Barbara, and Barbara did have a, a you know a, what what seems a personal enjoyment in that sort of stuff. But then, what's going on when that's happening in front of Barbara? Who knows? I mean, there could be all sorts of things, and I guess that could be when we do things to entertain Barbara, what's happening could be much bigger. But it's, um, no, there would be other people who would have um, probably far clearer picture of that, but my recollection is was just out of, the inspiration was out of frustration. Francis did have a different phases in in the time that he he spent back in in Australia, and his early time was was more involved with 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 physical work. Later on, that became less so. He was becoming an, an older person, and for various reasons, not not that well. I don't, I don't think Francis really looked after himself terribly well, and he smoked a lot and drank too much tea and the occasional alcohol and things and um, you know wasn't um, wasn't fussed over his health so that um, I guess he did do, do certainly pull, pull back from more of a physical side of life also I think he was aware that he needed to do more writing there was a certain amount of things he wanted to get done and was aware he had a limited time to do them all, do them in, which you know, we, all, we all have that awareness, I guess, but it was a little bit more so with him. So he did pull, pull back from that quite a bit, yes. So that was, um, and then he did start to, start to sort of drop away a bit more. He would be off in his own world a bit, a bit more. And I don't, I, I, feel his, the onset of his, let's say, dementia was not, not really that surprising for someone with his age and level of health. And it would catch us a bit by surprise because Francis was such a, such a sort of intellectual and um, giant and, and, and such a strong personality to be around and you might talk to him and, and he, he wasn't really focusing on what you were saying. So that, that was a shock and an upset to people to see that Francis was, you know, the Francis we knew who was ever present wasn't ever present anymore. But that was very patchy, it would happen at, at different times, you know. And when Francis was, was fine, he'd want to talk about important things, about you know, spirituality, the arts, the, you know, um, structure and administration of Avatars, both things like that. He would want to talk about that. When he was having a, 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 a sort of non-with it day, it would be more a matter of how he was going to get his next food or what he was going to wear or something like that. There was, um, 
there was two sides to it, yeah. I don't recall him ever, ever trying to discuss really sort of potent things um, when he was um, in a disabled uh, frame of mind, you know. It was just, um, he'd become an, an old man who was concerned about his um, comfort or the, the potent person we'd always known and there was pretty much two, two Francis's. But it's not, I don't think it's unusual for no. people with, with dementia, yeah. And then towards the, towards the end, of course, he became physically really unwell. I wasn't much involved in, uh, well, at all involved in his care in his final days when he was bedridden or anything like that. I, I would see him occasionally. Other people saw him a lot more. But it was nearly all people who were involved in his care who saw him. I mean, it's, you know, watching someone die is not a spectator sport. You know. And also he was a pretty private person. And I don't think any of us um, particularly wanted to intrude on him. So um, even though I was around here every day and he was here, um, I, wouldn't see, I wouldn't see him on a daily basis at all. And towards the end, I would only see him every week or month or something. So, and that was the case for most of us. But there were people who, who paid a, a, a huge amount of really loving attention to Francis's last months and, and um, or last year really and months. So, um, and Francis's passing wasn't, he was a matter of sorrow in some ways, but I think it's um, a sort of lineal thing when you've known someone for quite a while that they are clearly moving to, to a time when their, their body says I'm going. And uh, that, that was, um, I, I remember people being sad about it, but um, it wasn't a surprise, you know, he didn't suddenly get sick and die. I was certainly upset by it, yes, I was upset by it. I think anyone who's here and now not here, there's a gap, there's, there's a gap. And also just the, the importance of someone with Francis's weight, you know, moving out of our, out of our midst. And then there was, of course, the business of, you know, burying him and things, which I was involved in and creating a grow. Well, I was, was very honoured to be one of the people that lowered him into the grave, yeah. And then I was involved in building his um, headstone and all of that sort of thing, yeah. So that was a, a, a nice connection for me, seeing I'd worked with Francis on the property, you know, that um, that was done, yeah. Well, it's, a, it's a, um, a large stone, and Kill Mountain is very much made up of large volcanic stones with a, a sort of ring, of ring of stones delineating the, the sort of normal shape of a, of a, of a grave. And then on the stone, uh, uh, there's, there's a, a, a formal brass plaque which had cut into the stone. I somehow or other managed to achieve that. And um, so there's the contrast there between the for formality of the um, Francis's name and age and Barbara's poet, if I recall, is on, is on there. And then the the, the, the nature of the, the large round, round stone. Yeah, it's rather a nice, nice contrast. It's um, a little bit different to what Francis had talked about when he was alive, because he had mentioned, had mentioned um, his grave yeah, once, and it was a bit, a bit different to what he'd, he'd said, but it was something everyone w was, was pretty happy with. Yeah. And it, and it was, was very fortuitous that, that he could be buried there. There was um, a couple of people who put the, the effort into um, uh, to negotiating with the, the, the council that he could be buried there. That was quite a, um, an important thing. And the council then said that no one else should be buried here. So, uh, and Francis was comfortable with the idea of buried, being buried here. He was... Um, yeah, he, he said no, that, that that was fine. Well, it was a spot chosen by the council. From their point of view, it was a really practical thing that this was the steepest part of the property and very unlikely that anyone would want to dig it up to build a house there because Avatar's abode, yes, is held 
in per per perpetuity to the extent that you can, but um, you know, if, if, if it was in many, many years' time passed on to some owners and they dug it up for, to build housing foundations or something, well, you know, the council have responsibility to think in those terms. So uh, that was how it was chosen. But it is lovely there because he liked pine trees and he's in amongst pine trees and, you know, can, it looks out to the, to the sea. I, I think it's a beautiful, beautiful spot yeah, and a very important part of Avatars and Bowie. It was, I mean, it was Francis's vision to come here. I mean, there had been some request by Barbara to go somewhere warmer, but none of the people had, had ever been to Queensland. So it was a pretty bold thing to come to, to, to come here and do, do what he did. And once again, Francis, not being the shy type, um, took control of the whole, the whole situation. No particular emphasis on it being re relocated, but that the Barber's room needed to be housed in an appropriate, appropriate building. Um, as we saw with Mayor House, Francis thought it was very, very important to have, have a, 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 a really special um, permanent structure for, for Barber. And Francis had the same idea for here that it should be a, 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 a large permanent, well not necessarily large, but a permanent structure. And that Barber's room would be within that. And once again, the vision for it, which he, he had drawn out and I, I'd seen was, was not a, an, an Asian thing or particularly, it was more a sort of Florentine dome. Well, I don't know if people are familiar with a big cathedral in Florence, a, a very big high vaulted dome. And um, that was what Francis had envisaged to, to encase um, Barber's room. And the kit shearing shed that it's in was not part of that plan at all. There was no, no um, intention of his part that that would stay. And I remember, um, I seem to always remember getting into trouble with Francis uh, when it happened, but um, I'd said to him how I was really very fond of the shed and how it you know, meant a lot and I'd remembered it. And, 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 fr and Francis got really um, pretty angry and, um, and sort of stared at me very intently and said, do you know who he is? And, you know, like, took this, maybe he's someone who understands what I'm on about, and said that um, in the future, future years, Barbara's lovers, Will not, tol will, will not want his, t his room shrine kept in a shed and then almost yelled and said they won't tolerate it. So he felt very strongly there should be a proper structure um, for around Barber's room because Barber's room was made to last for um, 700 years. The shed was just a cheap agricultural um, kit shed and no no um, planning for it to, to survive the materials weren't chosen that way or, at, at all. So, but I, the, the last word on that was, I mean, a lot of people thought, oh, you know, we're very attached to what's there. Well, those people all pass on. Mm -hmm. And Francis did say, one, one day an architect will come. I would hope so. There was some talk Francis had of putting, putting it up on top of the hill. Um, but that was really based on the fact that um, people should be able to walk up to get to it. It wasn't a, a, a terribly strong thing. It was more a matter of the Barber's, the, the, the permanence of, that's been put into Barber's room should also be put into the building surrounding it. Um, from a practical point of view, if we had um, a big dome like Francis is talking about on top of the hill, it would become a tourist attraction here and uh, it's probably not quite what we want. And also, uh, there's no reason to move Barber's room, the, tr the trust who, uh, who managed Avatar's boat has said it's not to be moved and uh, I, w I would agree with that. Yeah. But that wasn't the main thrust of it. Moving yeah. it wasn't the main yeah. thrust. The main thrust was a proper building to surround it as a permanent monument. And a, and a cheap tin shed's not a permanent monument from Francis's point of view. 
He didn't, but he did spend time around that part of Sydney and I think we, we had deduced that he probably would have seen it if not up close from a distance. Yep. And the, the um, vaulted dome that he, um, he pointed out was along similar lines to that, that he drew. Yep. Uh, so um, I don't, I, I really don't know. I mean, from an architect's point of view, there's enough for someone to work on, yep. the concept. Yep. That it was a very, very clear concept yep. of, of what it would be. Um, and Francis knew about you know, architecture from other cultures and, yep. and, and, and chose that. So in the future, um, I'd imagine it'll, it'll happen. It happened with my house, it'll happen here, I guess. Very, very much on an almost daily basis, Francis is a huge inspiration to me. I mean, just in terms of my life, he's the first person that I, I met who, who knew important things. And uh, there's a, a lot to, to, to that for me. I, I grew up in a, a culture that valued knowledge and um, grew up around to some extent academic artistic people and, and the, the knowledge was very v valued but knowledge without the, the, the sort of relevance to the inner self um, was something that uh, really changed when I met Francis that, 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 that knowledge could be um, bought out for, for your own benefit and also the benefit of the world and um, I find that for, for very touching. So, as I said, he's the first person I met who, who knew anything and um, at the risk of disparaging everyone I've met since, <laughs> it's probably remains so, yes. Yeah, and that's a big thing. It's a very big, th big thing, yeah. And his, uh, uh, where Francis uh, sort of led me culturally and inspirationally, um, I, I'm still very much on that, on that path, both in terms of my work and my personal inspirations. Oh well, cultural cultural things, looking into looking into musical and, and artistic and spiritual traditions, and working with with people who do that. And it's very much along the lines of the inspiration that I've had from Francis and through Stay with God and uh, and other things. The most surprising thing that ever happened with me with Francis was one day we were um, we were wa we were uh, walking through the streets of the local town Nambour and um, and 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 we ran into some some fellow who was some sort of minor guru. He was an, an older gentleman who a lot of people, not other people, but other people had had a, had a, a great deal of of respect for and, and Francis didn't particularly agree with his ideas so we had we met him in the street and Francis was sort of reasonably polite to him but a little sort of dismissive and wanted to get rid of him and uh, anyway so the conversation ended and Francis and I walked up the road and and, um, and then Francis turned to me and said was I rude to him and it wasn't what I was used to with Francis, was I rude to him? And I, if he had have asked me quite a few other times, I probably would have said yes. And I did on that occasion. I said, you were a little, but I understand why. And uh, so there you go. That was my biggest surprise I had from Francis. Well, Francis, Francis, was, Francis was a mystic. He was a, a teacher. And he was a student, and he he was a seer. Then, only on on those lines, yeah. Francis was was a person of great depth, yeah. Oh, just personal inspiration and 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 connection to 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 Baba, yeah. Certainly, I mean, it's added to my relationship to Baba, absolutely. And um, added to my relationship to, to the, 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 the history of the, of, of the world and, and um, the importance of it and the unimportance of other things. I mean, Francis's 
articulation and assessment of those things still stand very, very highly with me. And I think would stand very highly with, it, with anyone who has a serious interest in the broad sweep of history and culture. And, and stay with God who will, I, th I think, really stand the test of time. I mean, apart from people being devoted to Baba, but just in a, a, an assessment of Im important parts of history. So um, I, I, it's really been, and also just on a personal level, Francis really conveyed to a lot of us about, about respect and where it stops and starts to, I mean, and deference to people and deference to um, cultural idioms and other, and, um, other religions and other avataric expressions. I mean, how to relate to that sort of stuff is something that Francis did, con I think, convey to us very well and um, you know, to varying degrees we embraced it. And I suppose I could finish with, with the thing that Francis used to say later in his life and the only thing that matters is the love with which one does what one does. <laughs>